to, to further our, our pursuit of God? How are you doing that? Because I think you're doing some really specific things that I've seen you do in this last quarter into this new year, coming into this first quarter, that I haven't seen you do. And you, you're doing it with your cross stitch and your, uh, your tablet. Could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, so this year, uh, this past year, 2016, I started cross stitching and, you know, uh, and I mean, I've taken it pretty seriously. It's, it's not just something, you know, it's something that I do for several hours a day, almost the whole in this, this year, like as much as someone would do like a part-time job, right? at least, you know, um, I've been learning, teaching myself to cross stitch basically. And I, I've always liked doing arts and crafts and stuff like that. So it's, it's not that foreign. You know, I've always tried to um, do some sort of, but, you know, so this is what I've kind of settled on for now. Right. And it's been really, um, it's fit into my lifestyle really well because, you know, you work from home, so it's something quiet that I can do during working hours. Right. Um, it's something portable. It's something that's not initially too expensive. Right. To get going, you know, and it, you know, so far it's working out for me. I think so, it's awesome for for those just to jump in with you. For those who may not know what cross stitch it is, can you give them a quick uh, rundown? Uh, yeah, it's a it's a form of uh, embroidery, basically. I mean, cross, cross stitch is a specific. X style of stitch. Right. Um, and then, you know, in embroidery, there's a lot, there's, I mean, essentially, you know, unlimited numbers of different types of stitches you could have, you know, but, um, my grandmother, I got into it, well, I was already a little bit interested in it, um, for the past couple of years, but, then my last year, last year in 2000, well, it's not last year anymore, but my, my grandfather and my father's father passed away in, right before the holidays in 2015, at the end of the 2015. So it just wow. was the, it just was the year, um, anniversary of that. But anyway, after he passed away, my grandmother, they, they cleaned out his house and everything, you know, and my grandmother did embroidery and needlepoint and stuff like that. Um, for years and so I they they found some stuff like uh, supplies and things that she everyone was <laughs> you know trying to get the actual pieces of art that she did right um, and I have some you know I have a few but the because she you know had her whole house decorated and things that she had done Really? Yeah, pretty much. Cross stitching? What else? What other well, stitches did she do? Stitch. She didn't really do. A bunch she did of embroidery. Stitches. Yeah, she did other kinds of embroidery and mostly needlepoint. Okay, you got a few of her her lamps, so you got at least one of her. Yeah, lamps. I got a, a couple of her. Yeah, I got her all of her supplies that were left over. Wow. That he had. She passed away in 1987, but he kept. He never disposed of. Wow. At least that. So. Um, wow. So he's still your your grandma passed in 1987. So he this kept... was all stuff that I got coincidentally after I started cross stitching. Yeah. Then, then they were cleaning out the house in the spring, and and um, I got those things. So that kind of spurred me on. Right. You know this journey, and that's something that makes me feel closer to her, or closer to my grandfather, and closer. You know. Yeah. So you complete something they started. In general. So I have a reason to keep doing it. It's not, oh, I like it, and now I don't like it. You know, that kind of thing. It's right. Like, it's actually a... Something bigger than you, huh? Yeah. This baby's so, going to be your creative baby. You realize so, that? So... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But anyway. And then, of course, like you just hinted at, I've been pregnant. And so... Now, for those of y'all... That's a good, uh, you know, um, hobby to engage in when you're kind of sedentary waiting for a baby. <laughs> so I hope th that's one of my initial things of this year is, you know, I don't know how that's, 
having the baby in a few weeks is going to affect my stitching time. It's For those of you, more of an issue when she like becomes a busy baby. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. You know, starts to crawl, starts to do whatever. You know, get into things. You know, it's probably going to be harder to find time then, which doesn't. I think you still see do it. Nap, you know? Yeah, I still think you'll. I mean, you'll but do it first. I, I don't think. I don't think it'll be fine at first because she'll be sleeping a lot originally. You know. Right. <laughs> Something we're hoping. Yeah, 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 which she will. Well, we, we, for what we know. Newborns do, generally. And just to bring you guys up to speed, you know, uh, who, who may be tuning in for the first time and maybe the second time and maybe may have missed it in the previous broadcast, you know, Smirk, Smirk, she and I, we, uh, we've known each other for three years. We just got married last year in November. No, September. Was it September? Goodness gracious. That's, but see, that's, that shows you something. About time, September, October, November, December... That was January. It just seems like, to me, it all seems like one big, long day. Trust me, if you're young, one day you will live to the point in your life that your whole life will seem like one big, long day, which I mean is like, I'm thinking back to those things, this didn't assume mine, but we are expecting, uh, we actually scheduled for a C-section on the 20th of this month. Uh, it's already the first, so 19 days, every day we just count down. The benefit of, you know, I guess being having a scheduled C-section is like we know where she's going to come. Unless, you know, as much as we can, in the pursuit of God, we already know God is in control of all things. He may want her to come today. But if she doesn't come by the 19th, we waking up in the morning on the 20th and going and getting this done. How, how do you feel about that, Smirk? Um, just, well, I mean, like, I wish she would come earlier. And, you know, I've had two C-sections, and I wouldn't say they were bad experiences, but everyone, not everyone, but a lot of people say that you just recover a lot quicker from the regular thing. But if she's really, you know, like I have a history of big babies and not going early, you know, all my babies have been, I mean, not all of them, man. that sounds like I've had like 20. But, <laughs> um, Every last one of my babies. Yeah, and what I was saying is I, def I don't want to have to be in labor and then have a C-section on top of that. Right. If I'm going to have a C-section, I'd rather j go in for it in the morning and have be planned and yeah. be rested and, you know, it's, it is... That's the way my second one was. It was planned, and it was not a bad experience. Right. So, um, I mean, it's hard to recover from surgery, but, you know, I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's, you know, I've done it before, so now I'm worried about it because I'm like, oh, I don't know. I'm starting to get, like, actually worried about just having a baby. <laughs> it's like, it's been eight years, and... You know, I just... I'm like, hey, for oh me, gosh, it's been, I what, 13? I mean, and yeah. I, and I never had to have it like you do. I know. <laughs> so let me ask you, if you had to tell something, and we go, you know, and as we get back on tracks, so I wanted everybody to really know, you know, where we are, you know, who they're listening to in the state of us. And follow us. Again, follow us. Press that follow button. We take these. These are not just random. You know, we give you a snapshot into our lives. But, um... What I was going to say is, if you had to tell yourself, if you had to tell the post-baby Stephanie, a.k.a. Smurgy Smurg, how you feeling right now, right? And you'll listen back to it and be like, wow, that's, as we're looking down at her and she's here, she's in the bed and she's dressed and we're like, wow, she's actually here. Tell, tell your post-birth self how you feel right now as an expected mother in your ninth month with 19 days before you schedule C-section. What do you think? What are your thoughts? Well, I mean, as far as I could remember, I mean, because I'm, I'm only going off of previous uh, experience, that, basically. Right. You know, that's... So, um, I remember what I... Because I can't hardly remember what it was like to be pregnant last time. Right. Or, so tell me how you or, feel right... Tell your, your future self, how do you feel right now? How do you feel right this second... You know, all you know, we we know what to expect, but then again, you don't know what to expect. So, How are you I feel are, right now? Yeah, are you are you a little scared? Are you enthusiastic? No, I'm, I'm you... mostly exhausted, and and I like, I feel so much, you know, 
bearing down and just uncomfortability. My joints hurt. You know, um, I'm ready for it to be over. And that's what I'm saying. Is just, I remember, like, after both of the babies were born, you get, like, and it doesn't matter how they come, you know what I'm saying, is you still get, like, this rush, you, you know, that lasts, like, a week or two. Like, somehow you have more energy just because you just, cause you just had a baby. You right. You know what I'm saying? And it lasts, you know. How long? I don't know, a week or two. And then hey, you hey, start hey. to come, and when, once you start to suffer from, you know. The postpartum? I don't want to say postpartum, because that sounds so clinical. Yeah. I'm talking about that someone needs your care two to three every two to three right. hours. Right. And you're, like, hyper hypersensitive and hyper vigilant. You know what I'm saying? Like, at first, you're like, what? You know, I remember waking up and being like, where's my baby? Like, you know, because it's like, you're just becoming aware of there's this other person that's completely helpless, you know? Right. Um, so I'm saying, and so, yeah, um, initially you get like a, an energy surge from having, you know, literally having the baby and you feel so much better because literally the baby's not inside you anymore. Right. You know, cause I mean like, it's just heavy. I mean, it's just exhausting and at this point, you know, it's, it's a burden. Yeah, <laughs> physically a burden right now I mean so there's part since relief that the you know I, I think one of the things is like I remember when Maddie was a puppy right tell them who Maddie is Maddie is my Rottweiler and our I, Rottweiler yeah and I got her when she was 8 weeks old so she was the first puppy that all the other dogs I've ever had had gotten from some sort of stage of adulthood right not like a fresh puppy right right and so I remember taking her to the vet, and the vet was asking how things were going, and blah, 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 and what it was like, you know, just conversation. And I was like, it's just like, ha honestly, it's, I remember it's just like having a baby, except it's just not, not as hard. And, you know, like, uh, it's kind of fast-paced, as in, like, just when I thought, oh, I'm sick of this dog thing. I should have gotten this puppy. Blah, 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 blah. You know, she starts sleeping through the night. And I mean, like, you know, or not peeing, you know, someplace. You right. Because potty training has been kind of a challenge for Maddie. Right, yeah. <laughs> from the beginning. Like, you know. But she used to get up in the middle of the yeah, night I and need to, help, right? Yeah, I guess she would have to go out. I would have to take her out uh, twice a night, you know, it, to encourage her to not go in bed, you know, or something, you know, or wherever she was sleeping. So the point is, is I think in, in childbearing is similar, and it may be with other things, too. You go through these, you know, like, um, by the time, like, I think our preg, women, women's, you know, why do, why do human pregnancies last, I mean, last nine months? Right. Is it just a random thing, or is it, you know, and it's basically like because um, I think that any longer and women would just not be able to, to do it. That any yeah, shorter they wouldn't I mean, be done. And it's like psychologically, <laughs> yeah. And I'm saying it's like by the time your child, it takes two or three months usually for a baby to start sleeping through the night. Right. And by the end of the time, when you think, you know. This baby is is never going to sleep through the night, and I can't do it anymore. Blah blah blah. blah. Right. You, you get these, you know, feelings like that. But I'm saying, and then they start sleeping through the night. And right. just like when I thought this puppy thing, I was getting tired of the puppy thing, and I was like, oh, how can I? How am I doing this? And this is this this the right thing? I mean, this pup. I mean, this puppy is taking up a lot of care. You know. Right. Um. Then they kind of reach another. You know, stage, right? Stage, and it's somehow more tolerable. So I'm saying right. it's like. So so should that? What I was trying to say is my future self after the delivery will be like, you know, you there's always this feeling that it, you can't go, you can't do it anymore. And it's not going right. to end, and then it does. So. So hey, and you, I guess in a way, you can attribute that to to, to things in life. Whenever we. 
experience difficulty when we first when something first happens 